What's up, guys? Can you hear us? Gotcha. All right, good. Damon, how are you? Good, Adam. How you doing, buddy? I'm good. Good to see you again. You too. Damon, if you want to get the golf channel, can you see that, Shane? Oh, here? Yeah. I don't know if that was contractual. No, <laughs> no, no. I just was. Th- I just threw some on. It's, it's fall up here in Connecticut. Okay. Do you want to know the topic or do you want to be surprised? Oh, we can do surprise. Awesome. Mike, are you? have you seen it? Yeah. That was great. It was good. I'm really um, glad we did this. You guys make it easy. It was, it was loose and fun. I, I really enjoyed it. <laughs> All right, here we go. Ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Stick and Hack Show, a sophisticated and brilliant look into the world of golf from a stick and a hack. Now, your hosts, Mike Ryan and Adam Grubb. All right, everybody, welcome in. This is the Stick and Hack Show, quite possibly the greatest golf show in the free world from the the greatest golf club in the world without the course, Stick and Hack. I'm Adam Grubb, your host. That's Mike Ryan there, the stick. Uh, Mike, how are you? Good to see you. Super, as always, buddy. How are you? I'm great. Um, All right, so the guest today, uh, I'm going to do everything in my power not to use the pun and the joke that is typically used here. Uh, This is a stick and hack show, but today it is a stick, hack, and hack show. There's no way around it. Damon Hack is the uh, is the guest today, co-host of Golf Today, tournament interviewer and NBCSN Olympics host, as well as a sports writer, journalist, uh, media broadcaster. Damon Hack from the Golf Channel is here today on the Stick and Hack Show. It's the Stick and Hack Hack Show. How many times can I say it, Mike, until you're annoyed? You're going to say it. Well, too late. It's the first time <laughs> we were already there. <laughs> well, I can't. What, what, what am I supposed to do? I can't, I can't get away from it. You just got to um, be yourself, man. That's all. <laughs> All right, so first up, Mike, here is uh, the Magical Picture Tube. Now, I don't know if you know Tom Snyder. You remember Tom Snyder? He was used to be on CBS. He was an old old interviewer. My dad loved Tom Snyder. I, I used to. He did the Late Late Show, actually, for years. I do. Yeah, he used I do. to talk I do about him. the Magical Picture Tube and the colors flying through the air. Um, a couple weeks ago, the PGA Tour announced a shift in the 2022 schedule. The Farmers Insurance Open at Torrey Pines will now be a Wednesday to Saturday tournament instead of a traditional Thursday start and Sunday finish. It's a busy sports weekend, and the tour wanted to avoid the crowded Sunday with the NFL games, but that wasn't the only news in TV broadcasting. The Advocates Professional Golf Association, which began in 2008 with the mission of bringing more diversity to the game of golf, the APGA Tour's Farmers Insurance Invitational is also played at Torrey Pines and shares the same title sponsor. It's getting tweaked next year as well, and the event is adding a second round. More importantly, though, the second and final round of the APGA's event will be televised live across the country. It'll be the first tournament to go live nationwide for the new tour. Pretty awesome. Now, the television was first introduced in 1927, Mike, but the first tournament televised in the U.S., golf tournament that is, wasn't until the 1947 Open, some 20 years later. That Open took place at the St. Louis Country Club, and it was only broadcast locally. Roughly 500 TVs tuned into the action, much like the Stick and Hack show, ironically. <laughs> Did we get that many? (laughs) However, it didn't take long for golf to get the attention of the broadcasting networks in America. In 1954, NBC first got the rights to broadcast the U.S. Open, and CBS made its pact with Augusta National for the rest of eternity to begin broadcasting the Masters in 1956. ABC brought coverage of the U.S. US Open Championship to the States for the first time in 1962, and from then on, golf has continued to gain more and more eyeballs with more and more tournaments finding cameras. And one of the most pivotal moments in the history of golf on TV came in January of 1995. Arnold Palmer flipped a ceremonial switch, and along with media entrepreneur and co-founder Joe Gibbs, the king launched the Golf Channel. Thanks to Joe, Arnie, and an army of dedicated professionals, Mike, golf has been on television 24 hours a day for the last 26 years. Now, why do I say all that? Why do I talk about TV like I do? First of all, I have an affinity for TV. I love it. Second, today's guest has some serious insight into the world of golf television. He's originally from Southern California with a bachelor's degree from UCLA and a master's degree in journalism from UC Berkeley. He's covered golf, football, basketball, and I'm sure dabbled in other sports, perhaps darts. We'll talk to him about it in a second. (laughs) He's written for a number of outlets, including Sports Illustrated, the New York Times, and the Sacramento Bee. And in 2012, he joined the Golf Channel, where he continues to write and now co-host Golf Today. He's a sports writing stick with a last name we can relate to. I know I can. You can now add to his resume, guest on the Stick and Hack Show. Ladies and gentlemen, and Mike, I'm incredibly excited to welcome in Mr. Damon Hack. Damon, how are you, sir? Adam, Mike, what's going on, fellas? Appreciate you being here. Thanks for the time. Let's uh, get to it. We talked about in the, uh, the first part there around TV and broadcasting, and a couple of those tournaments that are going to be uh, showcased next year come from Torrey Pines. That's where you and I met 
for the first time. Um, at the U.S. Open, you and I met. Would you say that you were a bit starstruck? Oh, 100%. Uh, especially when I found out the name of your show, Stick and Hack. I'm like, wait a second. This is like kind of meant to be. So I was very, very nervous and, and very much in awe that you wanted me to be a part of your show. So I, no. I'm the lucky one here. Well, you, David, you, David, don't, don't, don't feed into it. You're, you're not helping not, any of us. He's not feeding in anything. Okay, this is how he feels. This is an honest, safe space. That's how Damon feels. <laughs> Damon, let's walk through the year of golf. Uh, we got, we got the Olympics. Uh, we've had the Ryder Cup. The fans are back. We've got all these young rookies out on tour. We've got a ton of LPGA superstars. We've got Bryson versus Brooksy. Um, kind of give us the rundown in your view of 2021. Yeah, like the old Brady Bunch, Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. To me, it's Bryson, Bryson, Bryson. And I go back to March uh, during the uh, Arnold Palmer Invitational at Bay Hill when we saw Bryson kind of have the sport in the palm of his hands when he was taken on the par five, sixth hole, nearly driving it, and just the, the roars that we heard. He was taking the game to the next level. And then he kind of put his foot in his mouth a few times and had this back and forth with Brooks Kepka and was being heckled by the fans in the middle of the summer, specifically in Memphis, and then at Caves Valley in his uh, long playoff uh, duel with Patrick Cantlay. And then his year almost went full circle at the Ryder Cup where he was like a hero again. And I had a feeling going in that if there was a, a week for Bryson to kind of get back on the right side of the fans, it would be uh, during the, uh, the great week in Kohler, Wisconsin. So what an incredible year he went from – the Ryder Cup, of course, to the World Long Drive uh, Championship and in the professional World Long Drive competition and, and acquitted himself very nicely. So for reasons for his benefit and also his demise, he has been front and center as much as anybody in golf in 2021. And, and you, have, you have young stars, superstars. You have the LPGA, which I uh, arguably I think is having one of its best years in, in, in recent memory. Um, the Ryder Cup was uh, a route and, and almost uh, almost boring uh, after Saturday afternoon. I'm, I still watched every hole, um, but it, there were so many storylines this year. You had uh, the return of Jordan and, and, and his play. You had some young, uh, you had a Sam Burns winning a couple times. Uh, you have the Corda sisters. You have the Olympics. You have Morikawa. I mean, it, it, it was almost writing itself. When you look back at this year and, and the coverage that you guys were able to do, do, do you get excited that, that you are a part of perhaps one of the best years of golf that we can remember? Yeah, it was a fascinating year. In many ways, the year of the comeback. You mentioned Jordan Spieth getting the win in Valero and need to seem kind of building toward that moment. It was fascinating how much he had been struggling and, you know, had the Ryder Cup happened in 2020 as it originally was supposed to, he wouldn't have even been a part of that team. So to see him kind of rise from the ashes, to see Lydia Ko put her game back together, you had... You know, 40-somethings like Stuart Sink and Brian Gay winning. You had Colin Morikawa stabbing himself as one of the best iron players uh, of this generation. And then you did have the Corda sisters. And it's funny you mentioned the Cordas. I was just doing a, an outing with them on Monday at Baltus Raw in advance of the Founders Cup. And I, I posted a picture of me standing between Jessica and Nelly and got more text messages from buddies about how jealous they are that I got to spend some time with these two you know, six foot tall, gorgeous, you know, great golfers, number one in the world, Olympic champion in Nelly. Big sis Jess got a win this season also, a top 20 player. Um, so, yeah, I, I was feeling pretty good about uh, not just uh, the year as a whole, but also the last couple of weeks and hanging out with the, the Corda sisters. But it's been a fantastic season. Brooks Bryson gave us some juice. The U.S. winning a Ryder Cup at long last. And then also these young players on the PGA Tour, the Scotty Schefflers, the Sam Burnses, uh, so much talent. I tell you what, one of the hardest teams to make in sports is going to be United States Ryder Cup or President's Cup team, considering how deep golf is on the American side. Yeah, and it doesn't look like it's going to slow down much. You know, you, you get uh, your buddies excited about the, the text about the quarter sisters. Imagine when they find out you're on this thing. <laughs> no doubt, 100%. <laughs> I'll have oh to God. make sure my phone is fully charged for the text that'll be flying in. <laughs> I'm going to put it on Do Not Disturb uh, on that one. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, the Shot Tracer and stats have, have certainly added to the experience of watching golf. Um, and there, as of some of the great personalities that are in the booth and that are, that are on the, uh, the course uh, in Bones, who I know is going to, back to caddying for JT, but uh, Bones on the course is basically the, the 
football equivalent of, of Romo in the booth. He is, uh, his insight has been great. He, there's some excitement now watching golf. But is there anything else that can happen or have we reached the cap of how golf is exciting to watch? I tell you what, the energy in Kohler uh, was a reminder to me that golf can continue to transcend golf fans and bring in sports fans. And I, and I think back to 2018 when the Americans lost in Paris and had a neighbor you know, come up to me who, who was a casual golf fan and, and just was so bummed out about the U.S. losing and how excited they were when the U.S. won. And I just, seeing the personalities kind of come out, seeing Bryson waving to the crowd, seeing Berger and JT shotgunning beers on Saturday before the matches were even done. Now, I'm not suggesting that week-to-week PJ Tour golf is going to see players shotgunning uh, we beers are. for, we're, for we're ratings. That. But I, I would like to see the, the players, whether it's f- through interviews or camera work or technology or competition, different, you know, whether it's putting the PGA Tour and LPGA Tour players together, having uh, Alexi Thompson compete alongside uh, DeChambeau, something to mix it up. Because I do think that the majors are sacrosanct. They're special. Uh, the Ryder Cup is, is, is a, an incredible entity all into itself. We've got World Golf Championships. We've got the Olympics now. We're, we're blessed with an incredible amount of events, but some of them look too similar. And if there's any way to differentiate, uh, bring in other sports fans to grow the tent, uh, I'm all for that. Damon, um, you know, you're a seasoned interviewer, but uh, in golf, it, it seems like, especially the the after uh, round interviews, they, they all seem to be similar. Does that annoy you at all? You know, as someone who, who's uh, an interviewer and often talks to the players after their rounds, yes, I, I do think that it's a an interesting, challenging skill to to not, you know see that someone shot sixty seven, but then you have to ask them about the round, or maybe you ask them about something else. One thing I try to do, especially Thursday, Friday, when the tournament is still far from being decided, is get some personality. Even at the U.S. Open, I interviewed B- uh, Bubba Watson for the U.S. Open, our NBC and Golf Channel coverage. He played very well, and I asked him about you know, his relationship with Matt Wolf, who's been dealing with some off-course issues and talking about mental health. And, and Bubba like, went off for like a minute and a half just on the challenges of golf and how thankful he is and how blessed he is, but also kind of the pressure of, of trying to be too perfect and trying to be a pleaser. And it's one of my favorite things to do. And as a journalism major, as you mentioned off the top, um, I love – kind of getting behind the, the, the stories, getting outside the ropes to find out what's going on with these players. So anything that brings out personality or brings out something different other than, yeah, I hit a five iron uh, into 12 and, and made that putt, I, I think that the viewer uh, would appreciate that because for the most part, the golf fan watching TV has seen the shots and, and knows that the X player or Y player or Z player shot 66, 67, and 68. So what can we do to kind of get that personality out a little bit, to to tell some stories? Because after all, I think great journalism is about uh, great reporting and great storytelling. You know, the, the only time that I have been enamored with a post-round uh, interview uh, was one time with Tiger. Uh, and And he was doing what you said. He was going shot by shot, but he did it for the entire round about a tournament that he played like three years prior. It was, it was one of the most, and I know that was his gift, right? And his, and his ability. But Mike, Mike has a, a great question there in that every time I've ever watched them, they talk about being high on the face. They talk about, oh, I had, a, had an uphill lie here, blah, blah, blah. Most people that are watching golf, most hacks are, I don't even know what they're talking about, right? And, and it, it's the same trite answers you get in the NBA. It's the same trite answers you get in the, in, in the MLB. It, it's, it's just, uh, oh, well, we tried hard. We played hard. We'll be back at it tomorrow. We're going we're, we're gonna to be, uh, it's like Bill Belichick, you know, just uh, we're, we're on to Cincinnati. We're on to we're Cincinnati. On to Cincinnati. I love that. We're on to Cincinnati. <laughs> right? So I, I hope that eventually some of these guys, and it just feels like they're taking themselves a little too seriously or whatever. I don't know what it is, but I think your point about Bubba and some of those personalities and coming in and, and br- pulling that out, that's, that's why I care about Jordan. That's why I care about some of these yeah. golfers because they, they have been through some stuff. Even Rory lately, who is not a, a huge, you know, he's a fan favorite because he's Rory, but from a personality perspective, he doesn't have much going, but now he's going through some tough times with golf. And I actually felt bad for the dude for three rounds at the Ryder cup. And then he comes out on Sunday and, and comes out of it. I, I, and you could see that raw emotion 
that he had. That's the first time that Roy has really showed raw emotion. And, and I was all of a sudden drawn to him as a, as a person, not a player, not an athlete, but as a person. Do you see more and more of that as people become a little bit more vulnerable and come out of their shells a little bit as they either A, get used to you, get used to Steve, get used to the others that are out there, or you just think people are now able to, to be real for once? Yeah, I, I think it's a combination. I think Rory's a specific case. Uh, you know, we saw those tears on Sunday at the Ryder Cup. Also saw him on Friday when he missed the cut at Port Rush. You know, after you know hitting his first tee shot on that Thursday out of bounds and playing horribly, and then on Friday, you know, playing great golf but coming up short and realizing how much you know, hearing that familiar Northern Irish brogue in the crowd and those voices and those friends and family, what it meant to him and how desperately he wished he had played his way into the weekend. So he's a specific case. He's a deep thinker. He meditates. He has interests outside of the game. Um, but I do think that that's the challenge of the journalist. Think about a, a buddy of mine, Luke Kerr Deneen. If you go to Twitter, recently interviewed Colin Mo on Montgomery about how he hit a fade. And I've asked him specific questions about the craft. And Monty completely opened up. And it was a fascinating couple of minutes of watching Monty describe how he thinks about hitting golf shots, the little beautiful three-yard cuts that that he typically hits. And it, it was really neat. It wasn't about, you know, what, what's your schedule for the next couple of weeks or, you know, what was that you did on the fourth hole? It was, it was like literally like specifically about how do you hit this shot? And like Monty like had a club in his hand and it was a really fascinating couple of minutes as one of the best players of his generation explained his craft. So at the end of the day, I think we're, we're, we're all human beings, yes, but we're also all like, we're dimple heads. We, we love golf. We, we love the gear. We love the, the inside story, the golf speak. And, and I think that the more that we can kind of bring something that the viewer hasn't heard before, uh, the more interesting watch it'll be. If I was any good at my craft, I'd ask you some questions to get you to open up. But <laughs> I'm trying. Um, I'm trying. We're, we're, just, we're warming up. We're like a Studebaker. We're just getting yeah. started. I'll just uh, <laughs> move right through the uh, pre-planned question. Um, Dimplehead. I've never. I've not heard that, Mike. Have you heard Dimplehead before? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> I haven't. I, I have it. one, so that's probably <laughs> I why. I love it. I'm actually mad that our brand isn't called Dimplehead instead of Stick and Hack. That <laughs> sucks. Uh, you know, there's a great line in Moneyball. Uh, Damon Hack is a guest to you here on the Stick and Hack Show. Uh, there's a great line in Moneyball where Brad Pitt, uh, who plays Billy Bean, the GM of the Oakland Athletics, he, he says, uh, "How can you not be romantic about baseball?" And I ask you, can that be applied? And I think it can be applied to golf how can you not be romantic about golf and you just highlighted some ways that that that, that is the, the, the case do you agree with that i 100 percent agree with it it's a seasonal sport uh you know living in the northeast now i lived in new york for 12 years now i'm back especially here uh you know you got the gorgeous you know autumn leaves that are starting to pop up here you think about chasing the sunset and kind of the the beauty of the game the outdoor game and i think baseball and golf have a lot of similarities in that. It's kind of a timeless thing. You think about, uh, you know, the the field of dreams in 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 baseball and in the tall corn and and all that kind of romanticism. And you think about, you know, golf and you think about Sunday evening at the Masters or uh, for me being over to cover the Open Championship as I have and where the sun like lingers in the sky till like nine or ten o'clock at night. And you know, I remember staying at, at Muirfield one year and walking out the back porch of the gray walls a hotel and it's just like this is like this could be the most gorgeous place on earth right now the sun is kind of hanging in the sky you know birds are, are, are chirping the butterflies are, are you know, flapping around like this is this is romance this is beautiful i wish my wife and, and boys had been with me you know or at least just the wife maybe the boys had, had the babysitter <laughs> but but you get what i'm saying here i mean i think golf's a, an incredibly romantic game a romantic sport a, a timeless one I think it's because it's an outdoor game. Uh, you can play it, uh, you know, especially in the summer when the sun is just hanging out there in the distance and you're trying to get those final few uh, holes in before dark. I just think it's a, there's a timeless beauty to golf uh, and to the national pastime that is baseball. You know, Damon, you were talking about and you're in the Northeast and you've been around sports and covering sports for a long time, you know. And, and I know you covered the the Knicks for a long time. Um, what are, what are the stories or athletes in your the, the stories or athletes in your career that you've covered or been a part of? And you look back on today, and it's still a, it's a pinch me moment for you. Cool, I've got I've got one for you. So I, you mentioned in the Knicks. So when Patrick Ewing 
was traded from the Knicks to the Sonics, like the, my first year on the beat, and he kind of bounced around the league for a year or two, and then he finally was done. And uh, at that time, Michael Jordan was back playing for the Wizards, so the New York Times asked me to go to D.C. to interview Michael to get his thoughts on on a player who he tormented basically his whole career. You know, the Bulls always beat the Knicks. That's just kind of how the story went. And even back to college when Carolina would get the better of Georgetown. So I went down, took the Acela Express from New York to D.C. to interview Michael Jordan. You know, I knew his reputation, obviously. He had won six titles with the Bulls and hyper-competitive. But I'd never really been around him before. So uh, I had arranged it with the PR department. And they said, okay, you'll get Michael after practice. So Michael's finishing practice and he's done he's talks to a scrum of reporters and then it's just me it's just me and michael one-on-one and i tell you and i will never forget it the look in his eyes it was almost as if his eyes were like backlit and like there were flames in his eyes and i hadn't even started the questioning yet once i started the questioning like his eyes were like brighter and brighter and i was like you know michael one of the your great rivals is retiring today you know couldn't you have at least given him at least one nba title you, you broke his heart all the time and he, and he was like nope nope that's just kind of how it went he like no like ha 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 you know <laughs> i wish i had given pat one title it was like flat line i'm glad i snapped his neck i'm the the greatest i'm the goat uh i'm gonna be hyper competitive in in everything i do and, and only two other people who i've looked in the eye that have that similar intensity one is Tiger Woods, who I've interviewed countless times, and the other is Jack Nicholas, who I've actually been to Jack's house to interview him and Barbara for a story on their relationship that I wrote for Sports Illustrated. So I think about all the sports I've covered, all the athletes I've been around, MJ, Tiger, and Jack Nicholas, who are three of the goats of, in the history of, of the planet, all have a very similar intensity. With Jack, I knocked on the door. He had been like working out or something. He opened the door. And like he knew I was coming with his PR guy, but there was just like a split second of like intensity and almost distaste and, and disdain in his eye that I, that I was at his house at like 8.30 in the morning um, just, just to let me know that, you know, you're knocking on the door of an 18-time major champion who's still <laughs> the, the man of the house. It, it just I, was an unspoken thing, but the eyes were, were just intense, almost backlit. MJ, Tiger, and Jack. Damon, I go up to Jack's house and he looks at me that way. I turn around. I leave <laughs> instantly. I don't care it, what it time it is. It crossed my mind. It crossed my mind that maybe I should reschedule and, and do this yeah. interview at a different time. Well, and I think we got a, we got a glimpse of, of MJ when uh, in, in during the, the five or the 10, ten part series last year, uh, The Last Dance, where he said, and I took that personally. It yeah. felt like that's just how he lives. Um, and even at, at when he was at the Ryder Cup, he, he had that look, that intensity. He wasn't even, he's not even playing. He's just sitting there smoking a cigar with a moderate shot. Which was a strange twosome, if I've ever if I've ever seen one. Um, it, there are as a as a sports writer, and you talked about this with Sports Illustrated um, and, and a writer. You have time, Damon, to to compose your thoughts, your take, your opinion, um, even even the coverage of the event. But with live TV, you're you're out on a on a tight wire, and and there's really no. There's no way to, to get away from it. How long did it take you to go from, oh, yeah, let me sitting down at this computer here and, and, and process to here's what's happening. What are your thoughts and, and your take? How did you make that transition? Yeah, it, it took me a little while. I, I went into television thinking like, oh, you just get on camera and talk and it's so easy. All you know, TV folks just steal stuff from the from the print guys. They're stealing all the newspaper, and you know we're the real deep thinkers. And your TV, you just you know, you're just a, on the boob tube. To, you know, you're just a talking head. Until I was the dude on the boob tube, and you've got a producer in your ear counting you to commercial, and you've got to you know make your statements succinct, and you can't curse. You you know you, you're not going to curse in a newspaper story. You have an editor who's going to you know get the word out of there. But you know the, you think about the the faux pas throughout the history of television. And I've talked to, you know, a zillion TV folks and that's their biggest fear is that you put your foot in your mouth. You say the wrong thing. You're a little bit tired that day. You're a little cranky. You're a little off your game in how much of a tightrope. It's a perfect description because you are, you've got like a, you know, a succinct amount of time to, to make your point. And the last thing you want to do is stutter or stumble or curse. So I have much respect. This is now nine years for me at golf channel. And it's harder than I ever thought. Uh, I, I think I've gotten better, obviously, than when I first started. But, man, 
It's uh, I respect the the Mike Tarikos and the Rich Learners and the Dan Hickses and Jim Nances who have been doing it for 30 years and who make it look so, so easy. It wasn't until I started doing television that I realized that it's not. Yeah, no, and those are some, some powerhouse names that you just you just mentioned. Um, it, it is a real joy to see your career um, as it is today and, and hearing you, you, you have had quite a career. Um, but it's really exciting to see you on golf on uh, golf channel and, and your coverage. And, and I did, I got a behind the scenes look, Mike of, of Damon, what he's talking about, uh, when he said he had to prepare. Cause when I did meet him, he was preparing. I don't, I think you were hours away from being on, on the, uh, on air, but you were ready to go just in case anything happened. I think this was Wednesday or Thursday of, of the open, uh, at Torrey Pines. And he was going through notes and he was, he was rehearsing and he was doing the exact opposite of what we do here, which is turn on the mic and see what the hell happens. But, uh, but he is a consummate professional. His name is Damon Hack and he's on the Golf Channel. And now let's take a hack show. Damon, now we're uh, going to take a break here in a second, but we're going to come back and play a game called In or Out. Are you in for that game? I am in for the game. All right, Damon Hack back here in just a second. When we come back, stay right there. This is the Stick and Hack Show. Stick and Hack brings you Coursework, a new and revolutionary golf training platform designed to provide any and every golfer at-home instruction. Coursework features a plethora of live and interactive courses, all taught by PGA professional instructors, including Adam Koloff, Jason Bale, Keith Stewart, and more. Go to coursework.stickandhack.com today to register for our courses and start the journey of revolutionizing your game. All right, Mike, uh, Damon Hack is the guest here at the Stick and Hack Show. Uh, he's on the Golf Channel. He is a writer. He is a broadcaster. He is a uh, just a great storyteller. Damon, it was a real, real treat to, to talk with you and, and interview. But now that, now that that part's done, okay, <laughs> we're going to see who you really are Uh-oh. as a person, okay? <laughs> We're gonna see. We're gonna see the Damon Hack for who he is. Okay, all ghosts are gonna come out of the closet today, baby. Yeah. Uh, the game is called In or Out, and this is uh, who is in or out of our foursome between Mike, myself, and you. Are you ready for the topic? I'm ready. Hacks of the world. Hacks I'll just let of that the sink world. In. Let that sink in for a okay, second. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> maybe my maybe my mic's not on. No, so it's like not. I want him in. The hacks now. of the world are in. Hacks. No, that was that was a perfect reaction. <laughs> hacks of the world. Let's stick an axe show your Damon Hack. Uh, so these are people that I believe would be classified as hacks in okay. their industry. Okay. And the first one will will be uh, readily uh, apparent. Uh, carrot top, in or out of our foursome. You know, it's interesting. I was actually a neighbor of Carrot Top in Winter of Park. Were. Of course you were. Florida, like. Like, not like, like around the corner, but like, I'd see him, you know, like riding his moped in town on Park Avenue. Like, so like, we know s- the same people. I have to say in. I mean, just as if you got back to Carrot Top, you know, my na- I might not get back into the neighborhood, you know? So Carrot Top's, Carrot Top's in. I think that's the first time that's happened. <laughs> that's the first time that's happened, Mike. <laughs> yes. <laughs> But it's I've true. never had somebody actually know someone. I, actually, I mean, we, it's like six degrees of separation. You know, like, to get Kevin Bacon, it's, it's Carrot Top. We're one in. And I'm He's already out for me, by the way. Okay. Oh, good for you, Mike. He's in for me because Carrot Top is the best. You don't know what you're talking about, know. Mike. Damon, you and I will go play with Carrot Top. 100%. Boom. <laughs> then we'll go see his little, his little puppet show or whatever it is he does. Uh, second, uh, Chrissy Teigen. Hacks of the world. In or out. Chrissy Teigen. You know what? I, I, I think she's got the, the she's got a bit of the mean girl. I mean, right? I mean, I was reading about uh, this is this is John Legend's wife, right? I mean, yes, she's beautiful. You know what? I want she's in, and then we'll talk to her about the mean girl thing. That's it. So we're we're gonna work. You know, she's gonna play, and then we're gonna say you shouldn't have been a mean girl. I, I think you know we, we can get John Legend tickets. <laughs> I don't love the she's mean in. girl thing, but I'm, we're going to work on her, though. That's the thing. We invite she's her to in play. Yeah. After the four hours, or considering how I play, five-hour round, uh, she'll, be, she'll be ready to six. roll. Ready for, ready for polite society again. It'll be six hours with you and me, and then with uh, Chrissy uh, doing TikToks the entire round. It could be 12-hour <laughs> round. Uh, she's out for me for okay. 225 dollars She's in for me. Yeah, oh, ooh, shocking, so Mike. Uh, yeah. David Hasselhoff. In or out? Hasselhoff. Um, Acts of the world. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I would like some Pam Anderson stories, so I'm going to say in. Yeah. He's I in. Like I mean, for Kit, you know, Knight Rider, David's in. Imagine, I mean, it's my youth. Yeah. He's Imagine, in. I, he's in for me as well. No, I, can't, I, I can't hassle the Hoff. 
<laughs> imagine he's out for you or is he in? No, he's in. I can't okay. hassle him though. Oh yeah, I can't. No, he's he's saying. in for he's me. In. That's why he's in, Adam. <laughs> I'm right. not hassling him. I'm letting him in. Can I get in. my joke out? Can I no. get my joke out? Absolutely not. I he's in for me because I want to watch him eat a burger and then we'll go to a John Legend concert and then we'll see Carrot Top at two a.m. in the Red Room. <laughs> That's a day, man. That's, That's a, day a day right there. <laughs> uh, Rob I was just in Vegas. This feels like I should that that like that should have been some one of my days in Vegas. <laughs> yeah, like, you're right. Rob Schneider, in or out? Gosh, you know, Rob, Rob seems like he's gotten angry. I, I like I like the Rob of like 15 years ago. Um, I, he's out, man. He's out for me. He's out. Like, out. 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 Yeah. Zero, yeah. zero chance Rob yeah. plays with us. Uh, the situation. <laughs> oh, man. So my wife and I used to watch Jersey Shore like, like religiously, pre-kids, I mean, and like now we would like swear it off. We would say, oh, we never would have, we never would have, but, but we yeah. did. So the situation's in. I want, he's in just for, just for nostalgia's sake. I, I can't be a hypocrite. I watched this show. He made me laugh. Snooki and Jay Wow, yeah. Sammy Sweetheart. I mean, okay, I, relax, I, relax. I, I don't, calm, down. <laughs> calm down. Yeah. Oh my God. Situation's Mike, what, what, in. Mike, what are you saying? Situation. Uh, he's, he's in for me just so I can fist bump and, and do some Jaeger shots on the first tee with him. All right. Well, he's out for me so you guys can play with Jay Wow and Situation and All I'll right. be in the clubhouse. Uh, <laughs> Tom Green. Tom Green. Gosh, is this like the Drew Barrymore Tom Green? Yeah. Wow, look at you. It is. It's Tom Green, the Tom Green show. He was in the movie Road Trip. Yep. yep. Uh, Canadian. Yeah. Hacks of the world in or out. I'm going to say in. I, I think he's got stories. I think, he, you know... I, I, I'm going in. I'm, I know I'm being consistent. I got one out so far. He's in. He's. Uh, I think he's out for me. Okay. Um, he would have been in at one time. I feel like now. I. I don't know. Early two thousands, he would have been in for you because he was. Yeah. He was on the road trip uh, high there. Yeah. And he had his uh, MTV yeah. show. He's still in for me because I think he. I think. Um, I think he'd be cool to hang out with. Uh, but it might be very weird too. So we, I might trade him for, and go hang that's, out. With Chrissy. That's the part that I'm unsure about. Like I, yeah. like I feel like he's going to do something he could be, wacky he could be, he could in the middle of round. <laughs> like eat a rat, he gets right kicked out or something. Yeah. Uh, all right, here, here, here's an interesting one. In or out? Hacks of the world. Millie Vanilli. Now half that combo's dead, but nonetheless. Wow, um, I didn't even know that. Wow. Yeah, he died '97 or '98 when they tried to be a legitimate band. Which wow. Caused him to drink and do drugs. And yeah, I, I'm probably going to say out. I mean, I, I, I was in, in college at UCLA. I actually liked their music when I thought it was them. Yeah. Um, I, I don't think it would be a fun hang at, at this point. I, I just no. think it'd be a lot of sadness. And I, I'm going to pass on that. Uh, that's no yeah. dog. It's going to be a no for me. No, yeah. <laughs> no from Millie Vanilli, Mike? I'm out. I'm out on Millie yeah. Vanilli. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Uh, Charlie Sheen. Yeah, that's out for me out. too. I just the, the the drugs and all. It's just too much. Just just it just it'd be, a, it'd be a. I thought you wanted stories. Yeah, I, I guess I, I guess so. But I just I, I imagine I think I, maybe if it was Emilio or the old man, I might might have a different answer. <laughs> I just think yeah for but Charlie. Yeah, I'm but gonna hope too, Mike. I, I'm gonna ask. I would ask Charlie about Tiger Blood, and then I think I might be done with the round because yeah, I just want to know. Yeah, I just want to know where, where that comes from. Hours. Right, can't do it. Uh, he's out for you, Mike. Uh, <clears throat> there was a time when I think he might have been in again, Ooh. but he's out for me now. Wall, I think Wall he's Street, like he's Wall Street way Charlie. past his prime, yeah. and I think he's just he's just too run down at this point. Wall, Wall Street Charlie would have been good. We got two more here. Uh, Jake Paul, in or out? Hacks of the world on the Stick and Hack Show. Jake with Paul. Him. Jake Paul, YouTube star. He's a boxer. He's an idiot. I, I don't. I don't know. He, wait, this is not the this is not the, the guy that my kids watch, is it? Yeah. I mean, Oh, for yeah. sure. Okay. Definitely. That's yeah. definitely who it is. That's out. Out. I can't right. do it. I can't yeah. do it. No. Jake Mike, Ball. Yeah, I'm out on, yeah. out on Jake Ball. My out kids watch. Yeah. No. It, it, we yeah. get too much in the house as it is. My, <laughs> um, speaking of too much in the house, Miley Cyrus. In or out? It's a national treasure, Damon. Yeah. You watch it. You watch it here, okay? I don't want your career I to mean, go up in flames because of this answer. I, you know, I'm going to say in. Yeah. I'm, just, I'm just going. Yeah. I'm going in. I'm going in with Miley. I mean, she's in for me. Yeah, yeah. Miley can hang. hang. I'm, I want to hang with Miley. Yeah. I want yeah, guys are, to see her yeah. close. Yeah, you, you guys are terrible at peer pressure because she's out for me. I have no interest in Miley Cyrus. I'm just joking, Damon. Miley Cyrus is in for me, 100. <laughs> percent I want her singing Dolly Parton songs up and down fairway yeah, one. Down the fairway, maybe in the rough too, but that's all right. 
<laughs> Damon Hack is the guest, the Stick and Hack Show, quite possibly the greatest golf show in the world from the greatest golf club in the world without the course. Damon, thank you so much for your time, for your energy, for your excitement, your stories. Uh, continued success in your career. It was a pleasure having you on here. And uh, I hope to see you again out on the course. Uh, and next time, you know, just relax. I'm just a man just like you. Okay? Well, I'm no used to it now. To be- now we're boys. Adam and Mike, you rock. Thanks for the extra stitching, the extra hack, and the logo. I'll, I'll, I'll look for that next time. I, I can't wait to see what the new logo looks like. <laughs> that sounds good. All right, there you go, everybody. You guys have a great day. Thank you so much for listening. And don't, don't forget to go to stickandhack.com to become a free member of the World's Greatest Golf Club without the course. We'll see you later. Bye. Okay, we're done. This has been the Stick and Hack Show. Go to stickandhack.com to become a free member of the world's greatest golf club without the course.